We mentioned the genius Ferdinand Bauer just now and the beautiful book by David Mabberley. Here is botanist Professor David Mabberley, formerly of Oxford, now in the Blue Mountains on Bauer's crucial role in Australia. It may seem strange in today's digital world to learn that botanical artists are still illustrating newly described species of plants and that organisations like the Royal Botanic Garden Sydney still employ people to do something that is, in effect, unchanged in 300 years. The invention of photography in the 1830s by William Fox Talbot in Wiltshire, England, incidentally his first so-called photogenic drawings were of plants, would logically seem to have seen off this activity. But, on the contrary, the genre has never been stronger and more popular than it is now. Indeed, the work of today's Australian botanical artists, mainly women, is considered among the most accomplished and desirable in the world. Botanical illustration attempts to provide a melding of scrupulously accurate scientific investigation with the flair and technique of the individual artist. The most distinguished examples transcend mere illustration to become fine art. Today, almost all of this is studio work, as the camera has obviated the need to draw plants in the field. But, of course, this has not always been so. Before the invention of photography, ships on voyages of exploration, besides carriages, horses, mules and camels on overland expeditions, carried artists to record coastlines, landscapes, antiquities, peoples and animals, as well as plants. Lieutenant James Cook's Endeavour Voyage to the Pacific, 1768-70, to carried two such artists, both of whom perished before the end of the expedition. Under the direction of Joseph Banks, a paying passenger on the ship, the young Quaker, Sidney, born Sylvester, Parkinson, prepared hundreds of drawings of animals and plants, besides landscapes and people, after the other artist died. When, in 1801, Banks pushed for a voyage to circumnavigate Australia to be led by Matthew Flinders, he chose to accompany him the best natural history painter available, the Austrian Ferdinand Bauer, to draw the animals and plants. Bauer was remarkable for his technique, because unlike Parkinson, he had no need to use paint pigments in the field. He had perfected a colour coding system, allowing him to make a rapid field sketch in pencil of the animal or plant. But rather than apply paint, he added numbers, each of these numbers signifying a particular shade of colour. For the Flinders voyage, he had a system with a thousand different shades, for example, 200 shades of green alone. The idea was that on his return to Europe, he could then paint by numbers to produce a coloured image based on his drawing, elaborated by reference to pressed plant material he gathered on the voyage. As only he knew the code, only he could do this. The question is whether Bauer carried a physical colour chart, there were several in use in Central Europe at the time, or his system was all in his head. No physical code has ever been found and such would have been cumbersome in the field. Bearing in mind the dozens of drawings he made each day on the voyage, the conclusion is that it was indeed in his head. His system used rather in the way musical notation is interpreted by instrumentalists. This astonishing capability was in a man who was scarcely literate and suffered a form of dyslexia. Certain obsessive aspects of his behaviour and the difficulties he had in managing personal relations suggest that he was likely autistic. There is no known portrait of him, unlike his botanical artist brother, Franz, who became resident artist at Kew Gardens in England, suggesting that he may have had some physical disfigurement too. What survives of this awkward man, however, is what has been widely considered to be the finest botanical art ever executed before the present century. But just 15 images of his Australian work were published in his lifetime. Only in 1999 was published his entire set of Australian plant watercolours completed in London for the British Admiralty. In 1997, a selection of those, with some of the animal drawings he worked out for himself, were exhibited in the Museum of Sydney, 
in the most popular show the museum had had up until then. Only in recent years, then, has it been possible for the public to see why Bauer has the reputation he has among scientists. Using the painting by numbers technique, under the critical eye of what we would now call his line manager, Robert Brown, Banks's curator librarian, and arguably the greatest botanist of the 19th century, Bauer produced his breathtaking life-size drawings. When viewing these, one sees not just a pedestrian illustrator churning out scientific images, but much, much more. Bauer combined meticulous scientific accuracy and a boldness of line with a sensitivity so acute, perhaps his remarkable mind enabled him to recall the appearance of the very plants he had hastily sketched in Australia years before, that the image comes to life in an almost disarming way. The exquisite depiction of the subtle nature of shininess or hairiness, the passing of one colour into another, the three-dimensionality of the flowers and fruits, with the seductive arrangement of his material, albeit in the standard coloured image on white of the botanical tradition, combined to achieve a level of sophistication that had not ever been reached before and is only now being equalled. David Mabberley, formerly director of the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney. His book, Painting by Numbers on the Work of Ferdinand Bauer, is simply sublime.